What's up guys, Frugal BC coming at you with some Algorand news today. A lot of cool little things uh, going on and I just want to go through some of these. We got the foundation is starting an Algorand wallet council. We're going to dig into a little bit about what that is. Uh, we're going to talk about Ginkgo Wallet adding Algorand and Hedera. So good news on both counts. Algorand reaching an all-time TVL. Always like to see that kind of stuff. Uh, Algorand Foundation XGov AMA is set for Thursday. That's right, they're going to have an Ask Me Anything about Algorand XGov. Uh, plenty to talk about there and Chrome extension coming for Para. That's uh, you're gonna hear that here first, so uh, tune in for that. All that news today ahead today on today's Frugal BC. By the way, guys, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like and subscribe button, as I always say, you don't have to smash it, you can just press it gently. We're here to bring you uh, good, bad, and the ugly. I don't shy away from it. I gotta get some heat for that sometimes. Some people don't like bad news. I'm, I'm a show when I'm sharing good news, and I'm a fudster when I'm sharing bad news. But you know what? I just believe in bringing it to you straight, and I think you need to think about it straight. So you can make accurate investments. By the way, on that note, we are brought to you today by Non-Fungible Domains. They are a proud sponsor of the Frugal, BT, <laughs> Frugal BC YouTube channel. I can say my own channel name, right? And uh, they're bringing you those uh, .algo addresses. Make it a lot easier than remembering all those uh, letters and numbers in your wallet address. So much easier to do. And and uh, we're big fans of them here. Uh, so check that out. Uh, link in the description. And we we're brought to you by Fractal Monsters, a play-to-earn game on the Algorand blockchain. This, this game, you can actually play it play it for free today and uh or you can buy one of their little critters to unlock more of the game but it's basically like tamagotchi mixed with pokemon and a little bit of smash brothers thrown in i like what those guys are doing i like what all both both of these guys they just kind of set their roadmap and they follow it they keep building and that's what we like to see for projects that we partner with so check out links for both of those in the description now on to the show. So one of the first things I want to talk about today is the foundation starting an Algorand wallet council. Now you might be asking, what is that exactly? Well, let's dive in. So what is the uh, Algorand wallet council and Algorand adoption committee? Well, this is what they're talking about right here. Adding a little thing there, by the way. Together, the wallet council and ATAC aim to achieve seamless interoper interoperability between wallets and applications. What is the wallet council? Uh, the council provides a forum to discuss wallet standards, propose changes, promote adoption, and it meets bi-weekly and is open to all in the Algorand ecosystem. To join, contact B. Martins, and he's got his email address there if you want to check this out on the foundation's twitter page uh now what is the technical adoption committee basically these are technical proposals from the council that are moved to the committee and re for review and voting so you have to be a little more technical they'll actually t they'll talk about wallets applications libraries open source projects and you need to have uh you need to have some some skills to be in this one the other one was open it's just about anyone can join but basically it kind of filters down to this uh atac where this will be a, a committee of a little more technical people um, so you, you got to be part of a live running product using Algorand. That is not me or have created or made contributions to a relevant open source project. Also not me. Have good standing within the ecosystem. I think I got that. Uh, and have relevant subject matter expertise. So none of that's mine. <laughs> but here's sort of the, yeah, so here's sort of the flow chart, you know. So they'll have some discussions. Um, then they'll kind of go out Arc3s, Web3 tools, Web3C and others. Breakout groups, go to proposals, research assessment of open source project, reference implementation, uh, then go back to the council for some review and consensus, and then that gets passed on. That stuff will get passed on to the technical adoption committee. They'll actually vote on this stuff and kind of push some of these things out. So uh, pretty cool thing. Uh, very nice to see. I think that's I think that's just really valuable. You know, I, I think you have some real a real chance to make your voice heard on some of these issues if this is something uh, you care about. And yeah, I like I'd like to see like some more standardization of some of the wallet features because it'd be frustrating. Back when I had my algo, sometimes only my algo would be supported. Sometimes para would be supported, sometimes both. And I learned early on that I kind of had to have both para and my algo, depending on what dApp I was using. I, I think that's becoming less now. I think para is pretty standard along with D, some, you see DFly or and hopefully Daffy when they, when they go live. So uh, anyway, good to see that. I think that will be a positive, positive news for the Algorand ecosystem. But speaking of wallets, Ginkgo is adding support for both Algorand and Hedera. So let's take a look at this. Wasn't gonna, I might have to repeat this on my Algorand or my Hedera video next time I make one, but let's take Take a look here. Yeah, so Ginkgo Enterprise Wallet, a business crypto asset wallet, newly supports Ethereum Classic, Algorand, and Hedera. And we got some 
let's uh, let's dig into this a little bit because I like that's a, I like that it's a business wallet. That's that's important. This is a, so Ginkgo is a Web three development company that utilize, utilizes blockchain technology to support corporate Web three businesses. Uh, head office is in Shuoku, Tokyo. CEO is Muto Murakawa. Here and after referred to as the company. Oh, they really make this uh, super. These make these things super formal, huh? Apparently, Ginkgo Enterprise Wallet is the number one crypto asset wallet with a the largest number of supported currencies in Japan and supports the business growth of crypto asset exchanges by improving security and operational efficiency of asset management and enable enabling speedy currency addition. So now uh, apparently with that, they now support 56 currencies. And you can see them here, there's the new ones, Ethereum Classic, Algo and HBAR, and they already had SAND. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Some of the ones I'm seeing on here, like it's kind of crazy that they're on here before Algorand. I mean, some you'd expect like Maddox much farther up in the market cap, XLM, ADA, I get that, DOT, LINK, sure. Um, I don't even know what MV is. That stupid XTC, I don't know where that came from. Uh, wrapped ETH, isn't that Axi Ax A A AXS? Isn't that from Axie Infinity or am I wrong about that? I mean, Shiba Inu? Like we need Shiba Inu in this wallet? Come on. You got a meme coin in there and uh, well, you know, I hate to complain because uh, like I said, they're adding Algorand and HBAR, so that's good. It's just really surprising that some of those got in there before Algorand or Hedera, which seemed more business minded. A little strange, but hey, you know, uh, it's cool that they're cool that they're they're on there now. So and it's, it's, that's especially important because that's like a that's like an enterprise wallet, not just like a wallet for retail investors, but something that that industry is going to use, which is always good to see. Speaking of things we always like to see, and boy, I'm just nailing the transitions today. Uh, speaking of things we like to see, Algorand TVL hit an all time high. Um, let's take a look at this source as DeFi Llama. And they say breaking Algorand reaches all time high TVL when represented as Algo plus six options selected, source DeFi Llama. So 1.246 billion algo. And this is great because this solves, this solves a problem I was talking about in TVL where it's it's often measured in dollar amount. So we've actually had higher dollar amounts than uh, 197. I think we've been in the 200s or even higher, but but I like to see this. Uh, I like to see this measured in algo because this gives us a more accurate representation. And this is it says this is before the tiny man folks finance tokens launch coming this year. Yeah, I'm not interested. I'll be honest, I'm not interested in those. <laughs> I don't need a token from tiny man or folks. Uh, great, both great platforms by the way. I'm not knocking them. Do not need a token from them. But yeah, we can uh, dig this out a little bit. It's funny how they uh, how they dip in. So so. Yeah, those look like quarterly dips. So basically, it seems like a lot of that has to do with governance. Is that, am I off on that? It sure looks like it. It sure looks like when, when DeFi governance came in, that started to have a huge impact on DeFi because you can see everyone taking them out and then putting them back in is what it kind of looks like. I don't know that for sure. I'd have to dig in a little deeper to look at the timing, but it looks, it looks very much like that timing because the end of September would be the quarter, end of 2023 would be the quarter, April, July, October, those are all right around the quarters ends. So yeah, and it just had a little, a little blip up there, um, but kind of actually, you know, if you look at the overall trend, it kind of looks a little flat, if not declining toward the end. So, you know, got to take that with a grain of salt, but nice to see, um, Nice to see that. Nice to see that record being set. Anyway, I think that's. Uh, I think that's really cool. So good for Algorand. You know, we need good news. Good news is good. Sorry, I don't have a. I don't have a clever transition for this one. But XGov, um, you guys know. You guys know it. It's like the next level of governance where you get to vote on funding for projects. Basically, uh, well, they're gonna have an AMA. The Algorand Foundation is gonna host an AMA, so you can ask them anything about XGov. Um, I think this is really interesting. I actually would like to host a. I would actually like to host a debate, maybe. Between between, uh, between John from Non-Fungible Domains and someone who's like a pro XGov person. Let him go, let him go to town and uh, kind of battle it out. Cause I, I think there's some, John made a post, a Twitter thread, which he followed up with a Medium post, uh, kind of suggesting we ought to throw governance completely out. Maybe maybe it'll come out in this AMA. Uh, we'll see, but let's take a look here. Attention Xcode proposers, Thursday, February 8th. We are hosting a Reddit AMA with all Xcode proposers and the community. If you're a proposer and want to participate and answer questions from the community, sign up now and you can go right to the GitHub page and sign up for that. Didn't really get a lot of attention, but uh, I think this would be really interesting. We're definitely gonna pay attention to this. I don't know what 4 p.m. UTC is in my time. 
but it's it's Thursday, February 8th, and since it's on Reddit, I assume, I don't know, does it say? It doesn't really say whether it's video or not. Yeah, no, I think it's just a standard Reddit, you know, post, and they say that there's going to be like a two-hour period where people are expected to respond, but they're saying like, yeah, you can, you can actually, oh, so it sounds like, it sounds like it's going to be more like the projects themselves. Yeah, you know, okay, yeah, see, so, so, so this is the idea is that the project people, the people who are participating, who are asking for, for funding in the XGov process. They're encouraged to answer questions about their projects. So it's interesting too, because they're usually like, there's a lot of them. Like I went through one time and just went through all the projects and oh my God, it took forever. <laughs> I felt I felt bad because like people had to sit there and watch me reading these things off, but it was cumbersome just to do that. So I can only imagine like how many people just get to this and they're like, oh, I don't, this is a waste of my time. So it's a, it's a pretty involved set of governance. Uh, yeah, I think John's argument is that governance just isn't working. The participation is really low. Most people are choosing to participate in governance through alternative platforms like Folks Finance or Messina. So I think PacFi does one too. And they're just not really directly participating. And if you do those, if you do one of those outside platforms, you don't actually have to vote. So that kind of defeats the purpose of governance. And I think what he's saying is like, well, we're going to consensus rewards. We're going to re reward people for participating in nodes. Uh, I think we're going to see some pools pop up around that. So you'll be able to earn earn Algorand, I think, staking to some of these pools, just like you can like with Near or with uh, Cosmos. I'm doing that now with Cosmos and getting like 14%. Uh, and I don't have to vote. I don't have to worry about being in or out. I can pull my money out and go back in anytime and still be fine. So... Yeah, I, I just haven't been, I think a lot of you guys watching this channel a while know I haven't been wild about governance. I was excited at first because it was something new. And then as it as it went on, it just didn't seem that effective. And it doesn't seem like anything you vote on is really that impactful. Like the decisions don't seem like you're really making much of a difference. Plus, it doesn't really seem like you actually have much of a voice. Because only if you really own a ton of Algorand, like a lot, do you really get to have a real say. So, oh, well, but uh, plenty to, uh, I wonder how much of that will be people asking about projects versus people just asking about XGov and governance in general. I bet, I bet you'll see some of that. So we'll, we'll uh, be paying attention to that. Maybe we'll do like a recap on Friday. Uh, since it's not video, if it's video, maybe I try to do a live stream, but since it's going to be just, uh, it's going to be like a thread, you know, we can read that uh, in the video. All right. Last but not least, this one's kind of cool because this one was a little unexpected. Um, someone was asking me about web wallets and I said, yeah, I don't think I was like para has one, but I haven't used it. And I didn't remember why actually it was because it was, it was uh, read only that you can't do anything with it. That's what, uh, that, that's one of the reasons why I didn't use it. Well, turns out there is actually a Chrome extension coming from Para, and we learned that from John Woods. Let's take a look. This is in response to my question. He said, oh, let's see. Yeah, so this is uh, Jeff. He said, this might be a shot in the dark. He asked if there's no more desktop based wallets. And I responded, it's not showing that in the thread, but I asked and then John said, yeah, Chrome extension in the works. iOS Para works on Mac OS if you have a Mac. So, so actually you can use the iOS Para on your Mac if you have if you have a Apple computer desktop, you can use the iOS on that. Did not know that, might have to try that out. Yeah, and this other fellow, uh, Alex from France.algo said, how could I have missed Para on Mac OS for so long? I never thought to check. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought that either. No one talked about that. <laughs> no one talked about that. Darien, he said something in French. I don't know French. And also, yes, yeah, so I asked if Chrome extensions work in Brave, and he said most do, so that's something else. We're gonna, <laughs> I don't know what that is. We're going to skip that. But uh, yeah, I thought that was kind of cool, a neat little thing that I didn't know about. A, well, two things that I didn't know about, frankly. I did not know that a Para OS was in the works, and I did not know that... Uh, I did not know you could uh, download iOS, the iOS version on your regular computer. I'm going to have to try that. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of neat. Well, uh, meanwhile, why don't we look at the price just for funsies? Because for whatever reason, we never look at the charts anymore. I used to do that on my live stream all the time, but I haven't really live streamed much. I'd rather just make videos. Um, yeah, so we've, we've kind of uh, been sitting around that 16 and a half level. And it's, it's weird because it doesn't look like we have, but... It feels like we've been there for, for a hot minute now. Um, but it uh, seemed to be on the uptrend a little bit, so that's good after after kind of bouncing down. Uh, I'd, I'd really like to be hopefully in that 20 cent range by the, by the end of the month, if not 
higher than that. So uh, I think a lot of people are a little bit down because of the, the price action. And it does matter. You know, I, I, I got, a, I took a little flack recently for um, making a, adjust, making a video where I adjusted my price prediction down, but you know, I, I had to look at the data and every coin I compared Algorand to had way, way better price action in the, in the last year than Algorand did. I mean, everyone except Gala, which I've been is the one coin that I've been more bearish on than Algorand, uh, just because I think their company is is doing all kinds of awful things. They, they, it's just a nightmare. You can watch my recap on the latest, kind of the latest. Uh, now there's this whole issue with Vox that's blowing up. So yet another game is uh, having drama and problems. This this is us. People bought some very expensive Vox NFTs like like three or four years ago, and apparently the developers have been making they've been making videos of their game, but not actually writing any code which is troubling. I don't know a ton about it, so I don't want to talk too much about it. I've just kind of decided to go away from Gala. But anyway, uh, that's the one that that's the one that Algorand's been doing better on. I still think it's going to be two to $3 range. I put something out on my, my, uh, my Twitter account and I got all kinds, I got everything from like 25 cents to, to $10 or actually someone said a hundred dollars and someone joked zero, but uh, the range is very interesting. I just, I just don't think it's going to pump after, after going down to eight cents, you know, I could see like maybe a 20 X to a dollar 60, maybe a 25 and it gets in the two range somewhere. 30 is going to be pushing it 35. I don't think it's going to 50 X, but you never know. I mean, that's, that's the thing about price predictions. You have to be kind of careful because it really just to take them with a grain of salt. Cause the, the, the important thing is like what the macro movement is going to be and everything is going to kind of move upward as, as Bitcoin moves up and Bitcoin's going to be moving up because of the having cycle. I don't think Algorand will pump as much as the other ones, but they all kind of go up, but it's, it would be pretty surprising if it went down where everything went up. It just usually doesn't, as I showed in my last video, you know, the, the, they all kind of follow the same pattern almost, almost entirely. I mean, it's almost eerie how much they follow the same pattern, except they do it with different levels of strength. So you'll see the same pattern, but like say Ethereum will be much higher uh, or Bitcoin, whatever. So uh, anyway, that's it for this week. Thanks guys for watching. I hope you got something out of it and learned something new about the Algorand ecosystem. Uh, I'm FrugalBC, stay safe out there, and I will see you in the future.